This is Chad Capelman. A couple of months ago, I was reunited via Facebook with a high school classmate I hadn't spoken to in at least 10 to 15 years. Right off the bat, after having read some of my status updates, she posted on my wall. She said, Go Republicans! Don't tell me you want a butthead! Come on, Chad! How have you been? Married? Kids? Since this was sitting out there on my wall, I didn't really want to let it go unaddressed. So I wrote a message back on her wall that included a list of things I wanted from an Obama presidency, a couple jabs at his opponent, and then a closing salutation of, I'm married with no kids at the moment. Things are generally good and looking to be much better come January. We also got into a pretty intense Facebook IM chat that I now wish I had saved. I can't seem to find an archive of and have no hope of finding since Facebook doesn't make such archives available like Gmail does. Fast forward two weeks as I'm twittering the third presidential debate. At one point I write, I like Obama's term, army of new teachers. Hope there's some thought on removing bad superintendents, though. My Twitter updates populate my Facebook status updates, and this one prompted the following wall comment from the same person. Have you served? I didn't think so. Actually, Huckabee is better than both of them, but Palin and McCain are way better than O'Butthead. Get it right! Again, this was on my wall, not a private message, so I responded to her wall. Get what right exactly? That I want us to take education seriously, and that we should fund it on a level closer to that of the Pentagon? Have I served? What does that have to do with anything? Tell me what the view is like from the wrong side of history. Can you see Russia from there? Followed by a friendly, how's it going? I hadn't heard back, and I didn't feel the need to ask for permission to quote her in the blog post I subsequently wrote because she posted her comments on my wall. I had more than 300 Facebook friends who could have read it, which is a bigger audience than many of those sporting events I've covered for various newspapers and websites over the years, so I felt within my rights to post it. The 24 hours after I wrote that blog post were pretty crazy. I awoke the morning after Obama was elected the first African-American president of the United States to a message on my wall from this person. It felt like a punch to the gut. I debated the merits of posting their name, but decided against it, even though more than 300 people could read it. Maybe it was the Obama hangover, but I thought I'd take the high road. The wall post read, Chad, he will never make it. Someone will kill him before he ever gets to the White House. There are some good old country boys that are pissed. Who really cares what gays think at all? Do they really think? If they think, they wouldn't be gay. This world is all about handouts and feed me. What can you do for me? Our forefathers didn't fight for this. Obama supports the lazy welfare pieces of crap. He can't even follow through with half of what he's promised. It's impossible. I fought the urge to go as low as this post and instead wrote the following. If you think you can do a thing or you think you can't do a thing, you're right. Henry Ford. You need to let go of this hatred and negativity and see what is possible. I worry about your mental well-being over the next eight years. Obama's plans for America will actually help those country boys as much as anyone. Whether they will appreciate it remains to be seen. Be careful with your blanket statements about anyone, even the gays you might think aren't able to think enough to read what you wrote on my wall. Some of them even went to our same high school, which is as diverse a school as you'll find in the country. That's probably what saddens me the most with this statement that we could both have gone to the same high school at the same time and come away nearly two decades later with diametrically opposite views of people, the world, and what's possible. A link below this text box says, Give a gift to... Name redacted. I doubt the gift I want for you is on the list. More than 18 people commented either on my Facebook status, my wall, or in the comments of my blog itself, including several African-American friends and friends who went to high school with us. By the end of the day, that person also wrote in several places to say that her account had been hacked, and it was not her who posted those comments. I believe her. She wrote, I have contacted customer service regarding the comments made under my name regarding gays and Obama. I wanted McCain, but I am not stupid. Obama is going to be in charge of our country. I hope he does a good job. I have heard threats on him, but I don't wish harm on anyone. And the fact that someone thought for a moment that I was racist I have four different nationalities in my house. That is crazy. I had no reason to doubt her sincerity on this matter. I am glad I never used her name on the blog itself. At the same time, I also don't regret posting what I did, because at the end of the day, someone wrote those awful things. They were just as much of a coward as I usually assume the people are who say those things in a public forum. Those comments were the first thing I read the morning after one of the most special nights of my life, and it hurt deeply. I didn't want to pretend it didn't happen, and I didn't want to sweep it under the rug. I wanted to do something in a way that I felt Obama might handle it if he chose to respond. I was heartened by others who spoke out as well. 
I firmly believe that's the key to progress. Many must speak out at big things and small in order for the definitions of normal and acceptable to be changed. I regret that this person had her account hacked and that these things were attributed to her, but part of me is relieved. It was hard for me to understand how someone from my same high school could see the world so differently. We have different politics, and that's fine. That just puts her in the same camp as the rest of my family. But we still share one humanity, and that's what I was fearful we were losing when I read those statements that someone wrote. I am also glad I didn't unfriend her, as some people suggested. That would have severed the lines of communication and made a bad situation worse, which is what I fear has led to many of the misunderstandings we currently face in the world. A lot of different elements come together in cases like these. APIs, RSS, emotions, politics, ego, privacy, courtesy, and the shifting nature of the definition of friendship. I don't have it all figured out, but I am constantly keeping an eye on how all of this is evolving and what the impact of it will be on society.